I have a tooth again. Yay! For those of you who are following Tooth Saga. Once again, have a complete skull. That's great. Tooth Fest 2020. Um, <laughs> they got me in. They 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 were they put the, the, the crown in, and I'm fine. I can eat again. It doesn't hurt. We're good. It's very expensive. But I do have a good audience who helps out with that sort of stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's just, it's weird now. I'm not complaining about it. I'm happy it's in there, but I was telling you, I was telling you messages earlier. Yeah. It's a weird thing because when I had my first crown put in long while back, they just sort of shaped it and sculpted it and pff, glued it in there. Cause it's supposed to be temporary. So they don't really give a fuck. No, I'm talking about the original one before it broke. Oh, okay. The old one. The, that one was a permanent crown too. It just broke, but it was like, you know. Yeah. They just sort of like, here's like a kind of a square thing. Have fun. Now, for crowns, they do this this neat 3D printing thing. I talked about it a while back. They did like a 3D scan of the inside of my mouth and like did they designed the crown. That's cool. And they they 3D milled it. They they printed it with like, I don't know how they did, but they like drilled it a computer. Like they drew it on the computer and it got. Pfft. So now the weird thing is. I have, it, it, the crown is more like a tooth than it ever was before. Yeah. And yet, that feels weird. Because you're not used to it. I'm not used to having a tooth. <laughs> I'm used to I having like... fillings done a few years ago, and they don't use like metal or anything anymore. They use this kind of rubbery stuff. At least the dentist I went to at the time did, and it was so weird. For, it felt like my teeth were bouncing off each other. <laughs> very upsetting for a while but but this one yeah it just it's weird because i'm used to having like this cube thing that had yeah. sort of a little indent into it and rounded like edges a, like a minecraft tooth right like a minecraft i had a low resolution tooth <laughs> now i have a now i have a high definition tooth <laughs> we we had an adventure today oh my little kool-aid man here who's currently scratching away at his ears kool-aid man yeah. We call him the Kool-Aid Man because he's subtle like a jackhammer. This cat has all the stealth and grace and subtlety of a jackhammer. We love him. <laughs> you just heard that thump, probably. Mm. He just like will dive up onto the bed. Like he just like there's no stealth. He also does 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 Grady get the poop zoomies? No. Or he like desperately has to escape his own poop. No. It's apparently not that abnormal a thing for cats that they have to like run away desperately from their own poop. He really gets it back. I kind of don't blame him because his butt is a chemical weapon. But so every now and then we have the covered litter boxes and one has a door that opens from the bottom and it has a little hole in it. Every now and then he'll fly out of the litter box with such vigor that he throws the door open. Oh yeah. Today, he's downstairs, he comes flying up the stairs and we hear a thump and we're like, kind of a loud crash. Yeah. And we're like, and we have a bunch of pictures on the wall. So we're like, did a picture fall off the wall and scare him? Like what happened? We went downstairs to investigate and found not only had he thrown the door open, he had broken it off the night hinges. This little dude, ah, 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 cool ah, man ah, out of the litter box ah, with ah, such ah, vigor. That he blew the door right off. <laughs> and like, he thought he was in trouble. He retreated into his little tunnel and was just sitting there with the big eyes. No, dude, we're, we're like, impressed. That yeah, was we're awesome. Like, Honestly, we're impressed. Like, that's, that's amazing. And he fixed it with duct tape. Yeah, he managed to fix it. But, uh... Yeah, so I'm thinking, like, do we have to get one with a bigger opening? Like, he is, is he a little too chubby for the opening? Or is he just hitting it that hard? Like, I don't know. But that's oh. my graceful, sweet boy. Oh, well, it, it is time for the news. And uh, don't don't worry, we're not all coronavirus all, or, well, I'm going to have to bleep that. We're not all human malware all the time now. Um... It, it's it's still they're still a regular old stupid somehow which is amazing because you're all supposed to be staying home yeah life finds a way 
I mean, we went out a couple times this week. I was we're semi open with precautions. We go to the grocery uh, store and we I well I Sarah works because she's essential because she's a vet tech, but um I go to the grocery store. We go to the grocery yeah. store and then we come I come right back. I just I stay here. I'm happy. We went, here. To, we went to Home Depot to get some flowers and uh, the cat cafe opened back up under precautions, like by appointment and stuff. So we went in there to pet some kittens. What is it? I heard you were talking about another cat. Hi, Grady. How dare you? Grady, I got to do the news, Grady. I don't care. Grady. <laughs> But dad. Well, if you won't come here, you can just screw off then. Um. <laughs> all right, let's get the intro. <laughs> Kool Aid Big Cat. That's my boy. Yep. <laughs> he didn't want to talk. <laughs> yeah, he just jumps up on it. Oh yeah. Oh my god. All right. Each week. Catherine, Radio Daddy Ryan's go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And uh, this week we are... We... <laughs> There's a phrase I hate. Um, because it's kind of an ignorant white person thing. Um, instant karma. Thanks, John Lennon. Um, in fact, when you say, oh, that's karma for you. No. That just means you don't know how karma works right. or what it means. Karma is not addressed in your current life. That's not how that but yeah. but also if you if you laugh that somebody has bad karma, that gives you bad karma. Yeah. But I I don't there's I we'll just go with Schadenfreude because that that that's a good a good good way of going with this one. Um I, I, I really kind of love this story. Man's pickup truck stolen while he was robbing a store. Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, man accused of robbing a store in Washington State got a taste of instant karma. Shut up. Uh, when someone stole his getaway vehicle. Kennewick Police Department said 42-year-old William Kelly lifted some items from a business around 6 a.m. Sunday. During that time, police said a man on a bike rode past Kelly's red 1992 Chevy pickup and noticed the keys on the seat. The bicyclist then picked up his 10-speed, threw it in the bed of the truck, and drove away. Upgrade! <laughs> when Kelly finally <laughs> walked outside, he realized his truck was gone. And... Called police. Oh, honey. <laughs> Where were you at the time of the theft, sir? sir? I was robbing the gas and sale. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until officers reviewed a surveillance video they discovered Kelly was at the location because he was allegedly stealing as well. Police arrested Kelly on an outstanding warrant and added a burglary charge. Oh, and he already had a warrant. Yep. Yep. He had an outstanding warrant. He but had... Even if he hadn't... Even if he hadn't currently been committing a crime... Yep. Your ass had an outstanding warrant, and you called the police. I mean, the good news is you have a ride. The bad news is you're not going home. Officers have not found Kelly's truck or the person who stole it. I can just imagine him on the phone... It's, it's getting so a decent thief can't steal anything anymore in this town. I swear. What happened to, what happened to honor among thieves? <laughs> also, really, a 1992 pickup? That's even older than my pickup. I, I don't think yeah. there's a high demand. It's kind of impressive that it's still running. Oh, pickups, little, they're freaking tanks. They'll, they'll keep going well, well past when they should stop, oh. which is good. I've never had a pickup. I mean, they, they last forever. They're terrible for fuel efficiency in the environment, but they're freaking tanks. So they'll be terrible for the environment forever. Yay! Speaking about the environment, 
again, this is one of those confluence of events. This isn't exactly po- as poetic as the digging up the line for the, the call center, but it's just wonderful. It's delightful. It's stupid and it's delightful. This is from Scotland. Um, did it send? Yeah, it sent. Bull's bid to scratch itchy bum cuts off power to 800 holes. <laughs> and that bull regrets nothing. A bull with an itchy bottom knocked a transformer off an electricity pole as he tried to scratch his backside and cut power to 800 ohms. Four-year-old Ron managed to avoid the boxes that landed in his field and escaped an 11,000 volt shock from the tumbling gables. Isn't that like such a Ron Weasley thing to do? (laughs) And then Hermione has to fix it. But it left homes in three nearby village, villages in South uh, Lanarkshire. Lanarkshire. I'm going to guess it's Lanarkshire. 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 We they need... do the first syllable over there. It's, it's the thing, thing about the, the, the British Isles languages. You, you got to be drunk to pronounce them properly. Um, owner Hazel Lawton told BBC Scotland she was amazed that Ron had survived. Yeah, Ron's probably amazed too. It's thought that Ron, a limousine bull, I think it's called limousine, it's spelled limousine, uh, brought the Transformer down sometime between uh, 11 and 12 on Thursday in the mo- in the evening. Uh, Miss Lawton, who owns the farm with her husband Greg, said power had not been restored to local, alien to about, local area until about 4 a.m. on Friday morning. Um, as the couple surveyed the damage, they were joined by Ron. <laughs> Man, What's going get- on? Did you see? Oh, wow. Who did that? Wow. What happened? (laughs) I mean, it's like you were just like saying like Simba locked the doors off and he went away. He he followed us downstairs to investigate. Like, gosh, what happened down here, you guys? It was amazing. I have no idea what happened. I just, this is one of those wonderful things a bull's ass. Killed the power to like three towns. We were standing looking at it, and the bull just sheepishly walked up to the fence. He looked a bit stunned. I imagine he would. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> oh. Oh, Ron. This, this he poor, just wanted a perm. This poor cow. Well, the cow didn't know what the hell was happening. He didn't know. He just had an itchy butt. Oh, bless him. That's wonderful. I just, it's one of those things that you cannot account for in the world. I, I say this as someone who's worked in IT. The weird outages are the ones that and just. Like, can you even <clears throat> be mad about it? Nope. Like, even if you're mad that your power went out, the next day when you find out why, you're just like, that's adorable. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's move on to less adorable things. Um, we we this has become quite the the uh, the thing with boycotts from a, a certain certain sector. Um, uh, the, the 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 boycott in which someone will purchase the product they're boycotting and publicly destroy it on video. Which fun fact is not a boycott. That's not how a boycott By definition, works. that's not a boycott. Um, well, now people are... This is, this is kicking it up a notch. Inexplicably. And this is coming mostly from Australia right now, but we have all these <clears throat> reopen idiots. And um, <sighs> conspiracy theorists, theorists are smashing their TVs to protest the mainstream media. <laughs> okay, I mean OAN is on that too. So, good luck. Continuing the American right-wing tradition of engaging in protest actions that only hurt themselves, conservatives buying conspiracy theories around the pandemic are now smashing their own TVs and computer monitors because something something mainstream media YouTube video has surfaced of people yelling stuff about fake news before rendering their own property useless in an attempt to own news outlets that they weren't watching or reading before smashing expensive appliances anyway. This is particularly stupid. Yeah, because you're not 
They don't make your TV. They don't make the TV. They're not. That's not how that transaction works at all. Do, do you think they get money by the TV? Do you think just that they get paid however many TVs are turned on? That's not how that works. And if you like, oh, watch Netflix. I mean, yes, you can watch Netflix on your computer, but good luck huddling the whole family around your computer. And, and you know, I mean, if, if we're talking like even even England with the BBC, if we're talking like the BBC and you pay for a license fee, that still doesn't affect that has nothing to do with your fucking TV. No, that's that's Sony. That's Panasonic. That that's LG. That's that's people who have they don't make the shit that goes on the TV. Yeah, you're not hurting the media people. You're just an idiot you're just without a TV. Freaking it just. Mm, and mm. while I would love for this particular subset of people to like read more books. Mm. That's not what they're going to do. They're going to go to Walmart and buy a new TV. So you've accomplished nothing. <clears throat> but I guess you owned the lips. So this is a television, says one woman. It tells us what to do. Really? Because that sounds like a mental health problem. Yeah, because I've watched TV a or lot. Or a poltergeist problem. I've even, you know what, I just, for the sake of argument, I've been watching local news a lot more lately. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I'm kind of in a, in, in a bluish area, at least, you know, uh, but it's still red state. Yeah. Um, and they they, they sort of lean toward the, well, I don't know, he's the president and everything, you know, we kind of got him, I mean, he's a president, right? And even then, they're not they're not out there telling me you will do this, you will stay at home, you will do all these things, you must do this because the TV says so. Like we haven't hit the V for Vendetta portion yet. No. We we're not there yet. So if your TV is telling you what to do, you got problems. You should bring in the Winchesters. I mean, you kind of can't because <clears throat> it's a pandemic and you can't let people in your house, but like <laughs> You know, salt salt the TV first. <laughs> no, and then you should maybe look into some treatment. This is just this is one of those 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 um protests that's like, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, what are you expecting me to go? No, stop. Oh no, yeah. don't. What are you gonna do? That's your TV and you're destroying your own property that you paid for. And that's the most important thing. I've stressed this before. They already have your yeah. money. You can smash a TV. They don't care. In fact, most TVs are effectively disposable. Now, once they make yeah. the TV, once they sell the TV, that's it. They're done. And in fact, smashing the TV is good for them. Because you have to buy another one. Well, if you and even if you don't buy another one, that's a used TV gone. Yeah. So someone's not going to buy that used TV because it's not used. Anymore. It's smashed. So gotta think a little bit ahead because right. I'm like okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the protest movement when these people go on YouTube and literally set their money on fire because. I don't know. It has that's George actually Washington good. on it or something. That would actually be good for inflation if enough people did it. So yeah, I, I'm down with that's that. That's basically what you're doing yeah. is you're throwing your own fucking money out the window. Yeah. Oh. And like, financial domination is a thing. And if you're into that, cool. I'm not here to kink shame, but you're only hurting yourself, baby. Well, let them. All right. You know what? Have yeah, fun. Hey, if they're crazy. You kids have fun. Yeah, just smash your shit. Have fun. It's it. We're just gonna sit here and, and be stunned at that we share chromosomes. I mean, damn. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> oh god. Again, YouTube from the Department of YouTube was a mistake. I say on YouTube. Punks pop for pandemic video pranks. Ooh, the alliteration. <laughs> 
teens ran around Walmart coughing on patrons' staff. <sighs> Two Florida. <Why? laughs> Two Florida teenagers busted for running around oh, Walmart. Florida, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Busted for running around Walmart coughing and spraying workers and customers with Febreze, told cops they were, quote, just trying to be funny and make their videos for YouTube. What's the punchline? I, I don't understand. Oh, you, you've terrified people into thinking they may be infected? <laughs> What's the funny part? That people who are not you hurt? I guess. Um, the suspects, Amos Troublefield, appropriately named, and Antonio Green, both 18. All right, and that's that's the important part because 18, you're getting <laughs> tried as an adult. Stupid. Were captured on store surveillance for footage, uh, recording themselves coughing and spraying for for breeze from under their armpits on customers in the store. Spraying the air freshener on a victim was apparently intended to replicate the expulsion of droplets from a mouth during a cough. Someone is is padding this article a bit. Yeah. Um, when a cough, when, when a cop asked the teens why they would be coughing on people during a pandemic, they advised they were just trying to be funny and make their video for YouTube. Yeah, they're like repeating quotes. Yeah. Um, they were arrested for disorderly conduct and shoplifting. Did they, they seal the Febreze? The latter charge stemmed from the duo's use of Febreze bottles taken from a Walmart shelf. At least bring your own so, fucking supplies. Yeah, you can write them off. Trust me, if you're doing YouTube for real, you can write that shit off. I've done it. You know, it, it's how it works. But um, I don't think you're going to get there. Uh, yeah. For one thing... You're you're not the first one to have this idea. Yeah, uh, you're getting to a crowded field. There's a lot of douchebags on, on, on YouTube. The douchebag competition is fierce. People people are trying real hard to be the biggest douchebag on YouTube. So, you know, you got to get up pretty early in the morning to be the biggest douchebag on YouTube. Um, But no, you're getting tried. They are misdemeanor, sure, but you're getting tried for an adult as an adult for this shit. Um, yeah. And was it worth it? I mean, like this is this is a, this is going on your fucking record and yeah. shit. Was it worth it? I because like you don't need a lot of <sighs> talent to be on YouTube. Nope, I'm living proof. <laughs> I was going to say present company excluded. But like, no, I am not talented at all. There's a lot of shit on YouTube that took no talent to make. Oh, yeah. You don't need to be a fucking virtuoso at anything. I mean, shit, just get a dog and film the dog. Let's get a cat. Get a cat. Film. There's a, there's an entire Malamute channel I've been watching. Like I just locked on to it because the dog's adorable and they have kids yeah. and the kids play with the dog and it's just. It's soothing. I love it. Just get it. If you really are, if you're stumped for something to put on YouTube, get pets. That, that, there's never enough, that, that people cannot get enough of pet video. Don't, don't do this shit. <sighs> All right. Now, this is a full on, I, sometimes we have to go, we have to go back to the, the title of the show here um, to express our, our dismay. At some of the the topics we we approach, and this is definitely one of those those moments. Um, what the fuck is wrong with you, lady? <gasps> Woman caught driving over grave markers at Texas Cemetery on Mother's Day. Woman was caught on camera driving over grave markers at a Texas cemetery on Mother's Day. Amanda Hill said she went to the Houston National Cemetery on Sunday to honor her grandparents and watch a flyover commemorating the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. After the ceremony, Hill noticed a woman rushing to leave in a red SUV. She tried to back up, then she went up on the curb at the section where my grandparents are buried. Uh, the woman couldn't get around some cars. So she just started running over the graves. 
she went over dozens of graves by the time she finished. She heard us yelling at her to stop and just kept doing it. One bystander, 19-year-old Jeremiah Johnston, uh, recorded the incident on his cell phone. I was shocked and never would expect that to happen, he said. This is Houston. They're a crazy, crazy driver. She never would expect to see one of them going through a cemetery. Um, the woman finally left the cemetery. She's not been identified. Oh, I, someone's going to find her. They're going to find you. You are so dumb. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. Every now and then, when we're on the road, Dan gets a little bit of road rage. Mm hmm. And I have to explain to him. <laughs> Will <laughs> Will says, oh, her ass, her ass is so haunted. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That I, I just have to explain to him that, baby, that person that cut us off and ran the light, they're just more important than us. <laughs> they're just more important than everybody else. That, that yeah. person that just stole our parking spot that we've been waiting for, she's just more important than us. We just don't understand. So clearly this bitch is the most important person in Houston. And just nobody else understood that. I'm like, did you never see Poltergeist Lady? Don't fuck with no graves. Oh, yeah. You're so haunted. Don't fuck with no graves. <laughs> no, but all right. Where did you have to go? I understand being stuck in the traffic after a big event sucks out loud. Nobody likes it. But what the fuck, your majesty? Uh, it's two for one at the Harris Teeter. Two for one coupon day at the Harris Teeter. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Good. That's that's for the best. I've never been to the Texas. <laughs> that's good. It doesn't doesn't hold a lot of allure for me. No. Dark Angelo Otaku. I see dead people and she drives over them. <laughs> yeah. On Mother's Day. On the fucking, on fucking Mother's Day. Really? I mean, some of us, we actually do have dead moms. On fucking yeah. Mother's Day. Yeah. Christ almighty. Fucking, fucking, fucking. The fuck is wrong with you? You're, you're, you're just another big fleshy cockroach like all of us. And I think that's a thing that not enough people understand. You are also just a big suit of meat wrapped around a skeleton running on electric impulses we don't even understand. And you don't matter. Well, and that's your daily affirmation. <laughs> well, let's take that and let's move on to our final story this week because... Um... All I have here is why, why, why man climbs under moving big rig filled with wine begins drinking from tank. I mean, why the fuck not? Um, because it's a movie. There he is. There's a video. There he is. He's hopping on board under the right on the side of the tanker truck. You give it two months. We're all going to want that guy running our apocalypse team. That is Mad Max right there. <laughs> Climbing. <up. laughs> it's a wine. High, this is Modesto, California. Wine heights like you've never seen before. Modesto, California Highway Patrol arrested Gabriel Moreno after he allegedly climbed, jumped on a moving tanker truck carrying bulk red wine, climbed under its belly to unscrew a valve and drank the wine as the truck traveled up Highway 99. Video of the wild ride, wild ride was recorded on the Cherokee Freight Lines tanker truck, where I know allegedly targeted. See, they've caught on to people stealing stuff from the truck, and they've put cameras on them. You yeah. stupid. Um, the dash cam video first shows Moreno in a sedan, putting his hazard lights on, directing the truck to the side of the highway. The truck driver pulls over, believing he may have a mechanical problem, only to see Moreno get out, with only his underwear on. The camera shows Moreno running to the passenger side of the truck and out of view. As the truck driver pulls back on the freeway, another onboard camera captures Moreno jump back into view. 
Then on the back of the truck, with no shirt, no shoes, he rides on the side of the tanker. The video shows him climb underneath the truck as it hits freeway speeds. That's when the driver noticed a dashboard gauge showing he was losing fluids. Hundreds of gallons of wine. Ooh, that's a fraternity president right there. <laughs> Truck driver allegedly found Moreno in an unusual position. Uh, Moreno had unscrewed the valve under the truck as it was traveling. Um, that sent the tanker's wine gushing and Moreno gulping as much as he could. Um, <laughs> the trucking companies say they lost 1,000 gallons of red wine, most of it ending up on Highway 99. That's no, enough. You, you skipped the best what? sentence in this whole thing. Okay. The Highway 99 red wine heist, big and bold, with a finish in handcuffs. <laughs> Who wrote this? Steve Large. Five. Gold star for you, Steve. Five. He's got, he's got a big attitude. Yeah. 5,000 bottles of wine. I want to know, like, was this, like, something he planned? Did it, he just, se it seemed like did, it. Did he just find an opportunity and shoot his fucking shot? Right. It's like, how do you know what's in that? That could have been oil. Like, do they tell? I, I usually don't see tank tanks that say tanker trucks that say wine. No, it could have been like canola or some shit. Yeah, that could have been lube. No, literally, like, that could have been lube. But like, if he planned this in advance. Why didn't he put on pants? Yeah, this is sort of like that. That and Terry, you know, you watched Breaking Bad, didn't you? Yeah. This is sort of like that late season heist of the, yeah. the, the of the train when yeah. they 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 did all the stuff to stop the train and get out of the train and get the get the the fluid out of there and and then you know terrible things happen. But it's like that, only fucking stupid. Yeah. I mean, impressive. But wow. 5,000 liters of wine in the tank. 5,000 liters of wine. <laughs> you jump the truck. Best of luck. 5,000 liters of wine. Fluffer, no flutter, nutter. That was beautiful. Mad Max, blurry road. <laughs> red, red wine. Like, I feel like some planning had to go into All this. All on the road. But I also feel like no planning went into this. No, it's like... It's, and I can't reconcile those two things. Because the end result they were trying to achieve was so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> what the, the... This was the end game? I mean... <laughs> Mad Max Beyond Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is kind of this is kind of amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, like if shit gets real bad and a whiskey truck drives by, <laughs> I just, he's gonna be that guy. I don't know how he's kind of an idiot savant here. Yeah, because you know, like I look forward to his book. <laughs> in any other circumstance, he would have gotten like a face full of you know, I don't know, fucking. Uh, you know, sulfuric acid or some shit. Motor oil, chlorinated pool water. Sewage. Sewage. Like, that's a gamble. That is, he rolled the dice and he came I'm up. I'm just going to hold this valve and drink whatever comes out. <laughs> that's a fucking gamble. <laughs> that's, you know, you got to know when to hold them, know when to pull yeah. Oh my like, buy God. a lottery ticket, sir, because... Shit, yeah, I know. I mean, they probably won't let you because you're going to jail. Witness me! Get sloshed! <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing we learned this week is, um... Sometimes don't roll those dice. You never Dude, know. weird fucking apocalypse, man. It's a weird fucking apocalypse. <laughs> this, uh, Mad Max, yeah, I mean, this sequel to Mad Max got weird. Um, we've learned this week that there, there is a quick and easy way to get your ass haunted. Yeah. Just, you know, don't even have to be Craig T. Nelson. Um, we've learned that, uh, once you hit 18, that's when you go to the grown up court. 
Yeah. They don't fuck around anymore. YouTube was a fucking mistake. Make it worth it. <clears throat> um, we've learned that if in order to protest, you decide to loudly destroy your own property, we don't care. Okay, go ahead. You're entertaining. Yeah. And a few of us misguided fools are going to try to explain to you why you're idiots. But in general, we don't care. Have fun. Smash things. As long as you paid for them. Go nuts. Go crazy. Um, We have learned that sometimes you'll lose power because of a bull's ass. That is a thing that can happen in this world. Just th the stars align and all of a sudden you're, you know, you, you don't have hot water and you missed your alarm because a bull decided to scratch his ass on something. Try explaining that one to your boss. I'm sorry, Ron had an itchy ass. <laughs> I can't come in today. And finally, we've learned, man, it's gotten so bad. A man can't even commit robbery without getting his car stolen anymore. I tell you. Bunch of fucking savages. <laughs> I'm still in awe of the dude on the wine truck. That is amazing. <clears throat> I, I want to know more to this story. Yeah, like I need a documentary. That's right. Netflix, get on it. This this is is this is our next Tiger King. <laughs> uh He's not the idiot we need, but he's the idiot we deserve. 